Hello, and welcome to the Frivolous and Frugal Knitting Podcast. We are two sisters who share our fondness for knitting, the things that we create, and our love for the knitting community. And we do it all with a little twist of both the frivolous and the frugal. I am Frivolous Dawn, and in our family's birth order, I am the fourth of eight children. And I'm Frugal Miss Penny. I am the oldest of the eight in birth order, and our behind-the-scenes sister, Faithful Nikki, is third in the birth order of eight. Welcome to our returning <laughs> viewers. We are always just tickled pink to know that you were able to watch our episode, and we always appreciate your feedback and comments in our YouTube and Ravelry threads, so we're so glad to see you. And for those of you who are viewing the first time, yeah. welcome. We're so glad you made time in your knitting schedule and viewing schedule to sit and join us for an episode. We hope you glean a nugget or two from our fiber journeys. And to help that along, we encourage you right now to grab your knitting, your favorite note-taking device, and a hearty sense of humor because you are about to embark on episode 58 of the Frivolous and Frugal podcast. Take it away, Dawn. Okay, I said to my students the other day, they may wanna grab their favorite note-taking device. <laughs> <laughs> and did they just look at you? Uh, I'm sure they weren't listening to start with, so <laughs> all is well. <laughs> wow. You're funny. Um, you know what, should we give just a super quick update on the retreat? Please go for it. Yes. So um, Penny, unfortunately, could not come due to some uh, family issues. So Brianna did make her way from Chicago up here. And we had a delightful time at the Magpie Retreat. It was Brianna's first knitting retreat. And so um, she was loved by everybody and Penny was missed by everybody. So um, gosh, it was just a great time to spend and to see people that I basically haven't seen face to face for over a year. So that was very good and uh, it was nice. Brianna came up a day early and so we were able to get some family time with her as well. So, and she also got to meet the ladies that I knit with in Appleton um, at Going to Pieces. So uh, she was just uh, the little star of the weekend and uh, only the youngest by about 40 years. <laughs> So maybe that's why they're all mesmerized by her. And she's so soft-spoken. So um, yeah, we did miss you horribly, Penny. And okay, um, they look you. forward to, yeah, they look forward to the next time. So yeah, I hope and pray there is a next time because I miss those ladies. I know, That'd I know. Fun. And um, forward progress in knitting was horrible, but uh, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> horrible yeah, but, as in give us a math equation. So it wasn't until we were about leaving on Sunday that I was back to where I started <laughs> for the weekend. <laughs> yeah, so I was in the negative and I'll explain more of that as we go. But um, it was your wise words that said, she who talks a lot, tinks a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just so you know, Brianna tinked just as much as I did. In fact, I ripped for her. <laughs> And, and during meeting with the auntie, she said you did it with a smile on your face. I, know, I did. You it, is, it. it is so easy to rip out somebody else's project. I don't know what that is. Oh, yeah. When it's yourself, it's like tearing a bandage off a sore. But when it's somebody else, you're like, yee. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, how we digress. What is around your neck, Miss Penny? Yeah. In case you might have watched episode 57 and you think to yourself, I believe she was wearing that um, shawl during episode 57. You are right. You are exactly right. <laughs> but I wore it today because when it comes to what I've learned, this plays a part. So just keep that in the back of your mind. This is Quicksilver by Melanie Berg. I knit it in heritage sock yarn. That is the the um, brown and the orange, and then Malabrigo sock yeah. is that off-white, lovely, lovely pattern. Um, I knit it on a US size six, and on the frugalometer, I gave it um, two for the fiber and one dollar sign for the pattern. Yeah, I still have to do that one, don't I? You know, I would re-knit this in a heartbeat. It's one that I would do, but you know what? I would use her advice and I would add some inches. Because oh. that's one of my frustrations with this. I am putzing with it the entire time I'm wearing it. Yeah. 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 Very good. But I what am wearing your um, neck. Woo. 
This is the Three Color Cashmere Cowl by Hohi Locatelli. Um, you guys, I have it folded triple and look how long it is. So it is, it just keeps going and going and going. Um, it is in Brooklyn Tweed Peary. Um, Antler is one of the colorways, I think. Um, ooh, I can't remember all the colorways. So on your project page. They are, absolutely. Um, I think I knit it back in 2000. It was my first time to use Brooklyn Tweed. It was kind of one of those yarns I have on my bucket list. And I should have paid attention to the fiber content because you'll notice it has no drape. And so I wished it was drapier. I like this pattern for new knitters. This was the first pattern after I taught a beginning knitting class that the ladies wanted to do. So what a nice way to learn a few texture patterns, how to knit in the round and how to cut, change yarns mm -hmm. and highly adaptable. So based on how long you want it, you could leave out sections, you could add to sections. Um, and every lady who knit it did something a little different. Yeah. And so I just think it's a great project. You know, she, I love her three color cashmere shawl as well. And that was the first shawl I ever did. So um, I like it, of course, black, white, and gray. Who wouldn't like it? <laughs> I know. My color palette shocks you guys, doesn't it? <laughs> For being as frivolous as you are, yes. I would yeah. expect those brassy, bold, neon colors. Yeah, so frugalometer, I think I probably gave it a two for the pattern, but ooh, Brooklyn Tweed. Um, I would say I'd have to go three edging four for me okay. um, for Brooklyn Tweed. I, I wouldn't mind trying Brooklyn Tweed again, um, one of their different bases, but a little hard for us to get here locally. Of course, we can order it online, but I love to see it and touch it and all of those mm -hmm. things, so. Um, what is your lovely mannequin wearing, Miss Opal? Well, Opal is sporting, may I say, an off-the-needles wingspan. And we'll talk more about that um, when we come to what's off your needles. But that's what she's wearing for right now. I am interested in knowing what's on Ruby, Dawn. Oh. When Brianna was here, we were going through my shawls and she said she never remembered me talking about this one. So um, this is Emiliana by Lisa Hannes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I ever pronounced that name right. Um, and the yarn is by Yarn Carnival. It's in a discontinued three ply, three ply base. But I, w I wonder if I can show this. This is not quite white. There's just tiny, yes. tiny. Yes, we can see them not even specks, I don't know what they are, of the blue. And then look at that deep, dark blue green. That is um, gorgeous. That's a little better. That's good right um, there. Yeah. Yes. And of course, I just think Lisa Hannes is brilliant in her mosaic design as well. So we did this as part of uh, Mystery Mania back in 2000, I'm gonna guess 20, 19 or 20 at Magpies. And so, um, Love it, love it, love it. And a lot of talk this week online about Lisa Hannes because her mystery knit along started. And so we all talk a little bit about that, not today. So <laughs> it was on the needles, off the needles and didn't go back on the needles. So <laughs> someday, because Miss Carol, or um, yeah, Miss Carol from New Jersey threw down the gauntlet to knit that one. So mm -hmm. I will do it. I just need better choices of colors next time. Oh, good point. Yeah, good so point. I'll, I'll chat about those or chat about those lessons I learned. All righty. So I see you looking down. What's on your needles today? I am doing. Um, I just have two stitches Obviously left. So. That shawl. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is not the Lisa Hannes. Oh, happy wrap. So these are just a very. Um, let me show you the picture of the pattern. It's a free pattern on Ravelry called the Point Edwards Mitt. Oh, so um, Stephanie, who is my husband's daughter, which I guess would make her my stepdaughter, right? Um, oh. Asked for some and she picked out this yarn. So here they are so far. This is a um, twisted rib, very simple mm -hmm. pattern. It goes four inches here on the top because it can fold over. The yarn she picked out was Socks That Rock. Wow. In the Magical Mystery Tour colorway. Now she lives in the land of Simply Socks. So she went to their website and picked these out. I believe the pattern calls for worsted weight. So I'm holding um, fingering weight held double. And it is a really nice um, 
let me see if I can grab the ball. It is very multicolored. Um, so which is why it looks very, it looks very multicolored. So there it is, gained up. And I'm just, because I'm holding a double, I'm pulling from both ends at the same time, okay. which works in theory, does not work with the twisting of the yarns. <laughs> so next time I would just, you know, cake up 50 grams, cake up another 50 grams and pull them separate. Ah, it's good tip. I'm yeah. always untwisting. So again, I call that one on the frugalometer because it's a free pattern. And I would call um, socks at rock probably, um, I can't be remember to be honest. It's an indie dyed, so I would probably guess three stars or three dollar signs. Three stars, <laughs> three dollar signs. Um, what's on your needles? Well, I just cast on Hermes hat. And for those of you who have been following us, you know that this month's May's virtual knit night, we are hosting the de the um, designer of this pattern, Miss Beatrice Rubio, will be joining us from the country of Chile to chat with us. And now that uh, I have room, because I'm a monogamous knitter, I experiment this year. Um, I just cast this on during our knitting with the aunties last night. I am using some yarn from Stash that Dawn and I think may have been in one of Miss Joanne's giveaways. I don't know how else I would have got it um, other than I think it's beautiful. It's a tonal pink. You can clearly see if I hold it back, the different variations of tone in the yarn. It is a Rukiana Huasco DK. Now we're going to ask Miss Beatrice to pronounce that for us. It's Peruvian, so I am pretty sure I mispronounced it. But it's in DK. Um, I'm knitting it as the pattern uh, suggested. So I'm on US size fours and sixes for the frugalometer. Obviously, a $1 sign for the pattern. And for the yarn, I'm going to say $1 sign because I believe Miss Joanne gave it to us in a goodie bag. So yeah, I'm hoping to have this finished before our virtual knit night. Oh, fun. I, I look forward to hearing her chat with us. I am too. I'm excited. Do you have anything I else? I just I have need? one other thing and I've just started. So it's merely a cast on at this point. Um, my brioche journey continues. Ooh. Oh, Dawn. This is the Vintage Prim by Andrew Maury. Um, the ladies who were so willing to help me learn to teach brioche virtually have picked this for the next pattern. So they're calling it brioche 201 oh, <laughs> because go. now we're doing increases and decreases. You know what's interesting about this pattern? And it's a paid for pattern, so I don't want to say too much. The brioche is only on this side. The other half of the hat is just garter. Really? Yeah. So I think that's a nice way to learn some increases in decreasing, but then also get some rest, you know, the rows. So um, I literally, I'm just on the brim. And uh, mm -hmm. I forgot kind of brioche on, you know, fingering weight yarn and small needles, because I think this is a US three. Mm -hmm. um, so I literally have just started. So not much to see there. My yarns are Heritage Sock. Um, that's a fingering weight. Um, marine is that color. This was in my stash. Okay. And so I assume it's marine. I, I use that color quite often. And then this is Sweet Fiber, Sweet Fiber Merino Light. It is a very, very light gray. The color is called Birch and it's a single ply yarn. And I think I bought two skeins of this years, a couple of years ago to do a Helen Stewart shawl that I never did. So okay. um, I like single ply yarns. I would not use them for socks, but I think they kind of bloom when you block them. Mm -hmm. So, and very similar, obviously, to the color she used. So very um, similar. Ooh, that's yeah. really pretty. And I was uh, never even tried to do this at the retreat. <laughs> 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 yeah. So lessons there. So I'm enjoying that, except again, fingering weight brioche is a good challenge for me. Um, just that manipulating small needle, small yarn. Mm -hmm. So I would not recommend anybody who wants to brioche for the first time to do that. I'd think big yarn, big needles until you get the, the rhythm of it down. Cool. And that is really all that's on my needles right now. Okay. Well, since I'm monogamous, 
let's go to what's off our needles. <laughs> so as I mentioned, Wingspan by Kyle Bay is off the needles. Now, I intentionally put this up on Opal because I want you to see what it looked like when it came off the needles. Now, when you get the pattern, it offers three sizes. I selected the one that took 800 grams of yarn. So I purchased the yarn recommended in the pattern. I made a mistake. Number one, I did not weigh the skein after I caked it. I should have done that to make sure that I had, yes, yes. 800 grams or no, 800 sorry, yards? 800 yards. Okay. Thank you for the correction. I was thinking 800 gram ball. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the correction. I should have weighed it just to be sure because reading the comments on the shawl, everyone has run out of yarn. Oh. So I made a decision to not complete the last part of this pattern right here. It's called a section. I intentionally, I weighed my yarn and knew that I was going to be over 10 grams short yes. if I had done that. So I didn't do it. I ended it early and then just bound off all the, the feathers. I ended up having 11 grams extra. So I still would have been short because that would have not allowed me for bind off. Now, what I wanted to show everyone is what it looks like off the needles. It looks very tiny compared to the picture because this is what the picture looks like for the same pattern. Yeah. I am going to have to, whoops, let me do that. I'm gonna have to um, block this till it squeals. And so when you hear it in Green Bay, then I'll know that I've blocked it enough. <laughs> And then I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. So I just want you to see, um, because in the words of my wise sister, whoops, whoever, wherever she is, um, <laughs> wait until you block it. Yeah. Blocking makes all the difference. And so I'm going to follow your lead on this, Dawn. And hopefully um, in our next podcast, I'll be able to show you what it looks like blocked. Very good. And you know, I've been... Um... Well, we went to the retreat and then, I, of course, I watch a lot of podcasts. I can't believe how many people are monogamous knitters. I've not heard that term used often. And now it seems to be kind of um, talked know. about a lot more often. So you are a forefront leader in monogamy knitting, monogamous knitting. Well, can I tell you what I am enjoying about monogamous knitting? And that is, I don't forget the pattern and I stay in the rhythm of the yeah. pattern. Yeah. And for me, that gives me a little brain space while I'm knitting. Uh, that's definitely one advantage um, that I have found. Yeah, I would think that's true. Yeah. All right. Since uh, I, have, I have a couple of things off the needles. So I will start with the shift by Andrea Maury. Oh, we've been watching that. Look at you. It is um, a cowl that is connected in the back. So you can really see the connection. Don't look too close. I'm not very good with my finishing techniques. Um, but you know, when it blocked, it lined up perfectly as far as the, the measurements. So that was nice. And I just used a mattress stitch is what she recommended. The yarn is Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light. Uh, the white is antler, the pink is, it's a French term, coquette du or do or something. Mm -hmm. And then the black is onyx. Okay, now, do you remember seeing it before? Yes. Do you see a problem? I don't, Dawn. It bled horribly. <gasps> my water, my water was black. So my white oh, is no now longer you have white. I don't have white. Nope. It is now a lovely oh. pearl gray. It's oh. consistent through the whole thing. So, but if uh if I took the skein and put it up next to here, that white is no longer white. Oh yeah. So um I was sick. Of course, I had the color catcher. It happened immediately, so I was able to rinse it. Um, I have never had black run before or bleed. But um, I did not citric acid wash that yarn. If I'd have done anything, I'd have done it to the pink. I would not have done black. So, so it tells me the pink was saturated and it couldn't pick up any of that yarn. 
but, um, or excuse me, any of that dye. So I do like the pattern. Um, she has the same pattern out as a shawl, and now she has the same pattern out as a hat. Um, I don't know if I'll knit any of these. I like these. Um, wait till you see Brianna's. Hers is in a Zauer ball. And so totally different look. Uh, this is definitely geometric. And I think, Penny, you were the one who said to me, I could be wearing this in the grocery store and somebody behind me could have a seizure um, <laughs> if they were looking at it. Um, yeah, very geometric. But um, I don't know if I can put it over my head. It doesn't look too bad bunched. Let's see if oh, I can do this. Um, oh, yeah. Let's see it bunched. Just remind me the cowl is over my headset. So if I tear my ears off, you may want to pause the video. <laughs> no, I'll talk about you before. Oh, see, that does break it up. So yeah, it not, absolutely does. It does so. not strain the eyes like it did before or the brain actually. Right. So I do like this and probably will wear it quite do, often. Actually. Yeah. I'll just leave it on. <laughs> okay. There you go. <laughs> All right. Now, the other thing I finished was the Hawthorne cowl. It's brioche. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. The yarn is Plymouth Homestead. The brown is cho the chocolate colorway. The lighter brown is Plymouth Homestead Tweed in the oatmeal tweed colorway. I teach this in um, my uh, Brioche 102 class. What a nice workhorse yarn. Um, that is two pattern. That's about 11 and a half inches wide. Um, and then, you know, with brioche, it's reversible. Now for me, I have a definite side I like. I don't care for this side nearly as much um, because I love high contrast. So I like that side, but it really is um, your choice. So very pretty. And that was on, I believe a eight. So um, nice pattern if you're wanting to learn two color brioche in the round. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's two, and oh, this would be a Kofo. A Kofo, cast on and finished object in between episodes. Stand by for some Melanie Berg brilliance. Oh, 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 Here oh, you oh. go, look at this. Oh, Dawn. Yeah. Dawn. This is, this is zig, zag, zagtastic. Oh my goodness a hundred and fourteen inches of loveliness <laughs> ah, and is that what how the pattern was written for that length yep i am doing that pattern i DK, am doing that dk i'd love to see it in fingering so the yarn is a little bit of a splurge for me this is rowan alpaca soft dk the white is called simply white the black is called simply black but the white has a mohair with it. I, I don't know if you it. can see the fuzz. <laughs> Halo. Yeah, you can see it. So I have not done that when you just carry mohair with one color and not with the other. Now I the pattern- Some depth. Yeah, the pattern calls for a US six. I thought this fabric um, before it was blocked was just a tad too dense. I wanted a little more drape. So when I went to this first mosaic, I just jumped up a needle size. So I went up to a seven and kept it. Um, the rest of the way. And a Pico bind off is what was called for. And I put that on about half of the shawl, but um, I just didn't care for the look of the Picos because I knew I block aggressively. So when you block aggressively, Picos, they too stretch. And I didn't want the border to take away from the mosaic design. So that was just a call on my part. I don't mind Picos. Um, and then because I do block aggressively, you can see the edges are a little, um, you can see through them, that'll relax. Um, but yeah, I love it. Can't wait to wear it. I think I need so a new winter do, coat. Did you just do a stretchy bind off then? Yeah, you know, that knit two through okay. the back loop kind of stretchy bind off, which makes that very easy to block. And I use the weed whacker cord, um, 114 inches and it is 19 inches um, long. I think the pattern says um, 112 inches maybe. I was just a little over length, but I was almost perfect with depth. Um, and again, I like it oodles and oodles and oodles better after I blocked it. So, oh, oh, oh. yeah, I like that. I think I'm going to have to do that at some point. So because we didn't podcast last week, I was able to get that on and off the needles you between episodes. 
So yeah, love it, love it, love it. Absolutely. So um, super, super. Yeah. So what are you learning? I guess you kind of alluded to it a couple well, times. I did. And um, this was not planned, by the way, but now I'm going to have to demonstrate what I learned. Um, for a long time, I have always put a removable stitch marker on the zipper or on a clasp of my bag, whatever I'm using. Even if it's a plastic bag, I always put it on there. I never know when I'm going to need it or drop it or lose it. And I happened to take this bag with me to work this week because we had a meeting. So it was in my purse and I wore my Quicksilver. So I was getting very frustrated. It kept falling down. I couldn't get it fit. So I was holding it up, looking on the back side, and I noticed a slipped stitch. Oh, yeah. Because I had put a removable marker on my bag, I grabbed that slip stitch. And you know, I didn't see it from the front. I saw it from the back. And oh, you can even see it right yeah, there. Yeah, you can. Because I was looking at it like this. So I guess my lesson learned is always have a removable stitch marker on hand. Because you might just be podcasting a Hermes hat. <laughs> you might be doing a Hermes hat while you're podcasting and my removable stitch marker fell off. So I have no beginning of the round. I don't know where it is. So I'm just going to take it off my bag right now and mark the beginning of my round. Oh, that is brilliant. I wonder how many markers we've vacuumed up. Well, you may be several. I am so Dink and frivolous, I tear open that bag and I find that marker if I hear it go in there. <laughs> I just I will comb this house on my hands and knees if I drop a marker. <laughs> That's funny. I just listened to how many clinks. Oh, there, there went two. <laughs> I can't do it. My frugal side just won't let me waste one of these stitch markers. <laughs> So that's why I wore this again for you all to see how just carrying a, a removable stitch marker can save a project when you least expect it. Wow. So, and what, what I've been learning is just profound. Again, it, it's amazing week after week I can come up with these things. Um, <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Because this one I should have tattooed. Okay. Do not knit complicated things at knitting retreats. Ooh, 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 ooh. So my lesson learned is once again, I should always have a relatively simple project available at all times. So I think I'm going to cast on like a poncho that is just stockinette. Um, it could be a pair of socks. It could be maybe that uh, Muselberg hat. I don't know how to pronounce that Muselberg hat. Um, just something that I can grab and still enjoy the conversation because here's what happened at the retreat. My, my goal at the retreat was to finish this. I wanted to do this last section, 45 row repeat. I was about maybe half, maybe a little bit more when I realized there was an error. And in a geometric pattern, errors just stick out. I bet I spent half a day thinking I could just tink back and fix it. But I was off one stitch. So now you'd have to do that the entire row. And I think maybe, I don't know how many stitches, 300 maybe. So when I finally decided to frog it, that has mohair in it. So that is not a simple frog. And so it just took me the better part of three days to, and I, did, I just barely got back to where I was when we, we left on Sunday. So um, yeah. So we all know to grab a bag for knitting in the car when you're waiting for appointments. Um, why I didn't do that or cast on something simple for the retreat, I don't know. Um, it was not good planning because I only took like, you know, six projects in case um, and uh, definitely overpacked that. So I just think um, I don't I hate to say brainless or mindless knitting, but I guess that's what it is where you can know the pattern read the pattern simply and just also chat at the same time or zoom meetings or you know whatever well and i think it's a timely lesson dawn as shops are starting to open up and people are gathering in person more than we have been in previous months we should probably have a project like that handy so yeah very thank good you for your timely lesson sure and what's uh what, 
what's happening at Frivolous and Frugal? Well, actually, we have quite a bit happening. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is please look at our show notes in Ravelry and YouTube for details because I'm just going to hit a certain highlight or two this week. First of all, we are so excited. We have a scheduled virtual knit night on Saturday, May 8th from 7 to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time with Miss Beatrice Rubio, the designer of the Hermes hat. And if you're new, the Hermes hat was our April hat knit along. So please, if you're wanting to join us, check Ravelry um, approximately an hour before the event so that you can get the Zoom link. And if you are not on Ravelry, please email me and I will be happy to add you to that mailing list. And this month's question, as we always do during our knit alongs, is what is your favorite design element? So be thinking, if we have time for that discussion, that'll be the question we are posing. Also then, we wanted to let you know that we have made a decision and we are going to host our first frivolous and frugal Chicago mini meetup. <laughs> we will be in Hoffman Estates July 30th through the 31st. For those of you who would like to come and knit with us, we cordially invite you to do so. We will be following the hotel's COVID policies. So please choose your own level of comfort. Um, there's one thing that neither Dawn and I are going to do, and that is police their policy. So if you are uncomfortable with that, maybe you might want to wait for one of our other mini meetups. We are going to open a thread in Ravelry. It will have all of the specific dates and details within the next three to four weeks. So please refer to that as we continue to make plans to meet any of you who would love to come and knit with us. And then finally, we have an honorable mention. Now, you know, we love our dear Miss Sandy and she has been so gracious to Frivolous and Frugal. In fact, she continues to be gracious. She gave Dawn and Miss Brianna some more bags for us to use as giveaways. So Miss Sandy, thank you so much for your generosity. Yeah. We appreciate that. And we just send our love back to you. So thank you so much for doing that, darling. You know what, while you're there, I should show you, she made the bags for the Magpie Retreat. <gasps> oh, you happen to have one? Get this. Oh, look. It is square with four snaps, so you could snap them and get different color of yarns coming out and the little sheep on the inside. Oh, look at that. And you know, her signature of all of her bags is she puts in a zippered pouch, but behind the zippered pouch um, is also another pocket. So, and she taught some fun classes. Both Brianne and I made a beaded uh, shawl cuss or shawl class, shawl, what? cuff yep. thank you mm -hmm. and uh, some stitch markers so she i think she enjoyed the retreat as well it was fun for her to meet everybody absolutely so, yeah very gracious uh, big 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 heart absolutely and let's kind of wrap up today's episode with what would nikki say and i believe it's very apropos for both of us dawn this is what faithful nikki has to offer this week Adjustments are necessary in most projects, teaching or golfing. Go with the flow, enjoy the process and enjoy the outcome. Yes, our dear sister, that was the theme of this week. Adjustments, AKA frogging. <laughs> oh, she, she couldn't have nailed that any better. What was that phrase you used to say, improvise? Oh, you need to improvise, adapt and overcome. I don't know why I think that's military, but okay. It is. I probably is. didn't do that right. My nephews are like, Dawn, do that. Aunt Dawn, do that right. Look at look at the line. Look at the line. The elbow has to be out. What do you do this with your chest? Easy. Do you poke your chest out? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because you should get attention <laughs> when you salute. Okay. All right. So anyway, we are so glad you joined us this week. It has been a delight and a pleasure to knit with you, to chat, and to share. And we're hoping that your week is a sweet twist of the frivolous and frugal. Until episode 59, have fun and we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.